Yay Networks. 13 has been my lucky number for a while. Like, it's always a sign of good things to come for me. This is 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. Breaking down every song, every Easter egg, every era, and every theory. Hosted by the biggest Swifties. Nick Adams, Anna Casiejos, Amy Nichols, and Lacey G. Welcome to 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. My name's Nick Adams. I'm Anna. Amy. And I'm Lacey G. And we have a really special guest joining us today. Um, when Taylor Swift started her era's tour, a lovely Swifty named Allie had the idea of creating Swift Ball. Basically like fantasy football, but better because it's for the Swifties and it's a Taylor Swift. So, of course, we had to talk to the creator of Swift Ball herself, Allie. Hello, Allie. Welcome. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? So good. We are active Swift Ballers. We love to play Swift Ball. We, one time, we played it together as a team. We all together filled out our ballot. We did terrible. So, after that, <laughs> I decided to go solo after that and fill out my own ballot for every show that followed. But... Okay, so tell us all about Swiftball because it is growing exponentially. When was like yeah. when did you first have the idea? Tell us just everything. And do you like sports? Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't like football, which mm-hmm. is actually really funny because people are like, "Oh, do you like play fantasy football?" And that's why you did this. And I was like, "Actually, I don't. Um, I do like hockey, but it, that has nothing to do with anything." This um, is the only fantasy football I could get behind. Oh, by yeah, the me way, too. I'm exactly. I'm just like you, Allie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I the only football I watched was like when she did that like Midnight's preview yeah. back in like October. <laughs> like that was that was the only reason I watched football. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Swiftball, I essentially I went to the shows at MetLife, and you know it's it was something that I'd been looking forward to since November of 2022, and after that Sunday show, I was like, now now what? <laughs> like, yeah. Now what do I do? Like I I feel like everything I've been looking forward to is over. Um, I, I'm going to have like huge FOMO for the rest of the shows. Like how can I like do something so I can like be online and not be like sad about the shows that are happening after mine. And um, I had an extra midnight's late night CD and like so many people were in my DMS that I didn't even know being like, Oh, can you send me the CD? And I was like, (laughs) okay, like how can we, how can we do a giveaway and make it fun and not just, oh, like, like and follow. To yeah. enter. Like, I, I don't have a problem with it. But I was like, I, I want to do, like, something more. And I didn't really expect a ton of people to enter. And then our first night, we had, like, 800-something people. And I was like, wow. okay, that's fine. Cool. We, we did it for the one show. Fantastic. And then people started asking, okay, are you going to do it for Saturday's show? And I was like, well, I... I mean, I don't have another CD, but I guess so. And then um, after Saturday, they were asking, can we do Sunday? This was the three night uh, Chicago weekend right after East Rutherford. And by Sunday, I was like, guys, like, I mean, I can do this. I just I'm not going to provide a prize every night because that's crazy. And then, of course, people started offering their own things to donate as a prize. And that just kind of opened the floodgates. And so I was like, OK, I, I'll do every single show. Um, whether or not we have a prize and then people were just so generous that they kept donating prizes. And then, um, as you saw for LA, we had about like six prizes a night for all of LA. Um, and now we're doing international. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. So how, what's your plan for it? Well, because with the first leg with the US, like, obviously it's like, it was every weekend, but at least time zone wise for you, it was what? the worst was a three hour difference. How are you going to do it? How are you going to do it when she's on like a, the other side of the world? You know, that's a great question. Um, we're still trying to figure it out. Um, I think Tess has said that she's going to stream. I don't, I don't want to speak for her, but I want to say that she said that she's going to stream every single show. So worst comes to worst. Tess can just tell me like Mm -hmm. what she wore and then I can post like the results later I mean yeah obviously there's gonna be some form of delay from like when the the show happens and when I'm awake Mm -hmm. and conscious um 
And I don't know if we're always going to have that same interactive element um, that I'm able to provide while we're stateside or while we're at least, you know, within a couple hours of each other. Um, but we're working on seeing if we can, like, collaborate with some people that I, I know and I'm friends with that are across the pond yeah. that can help us out. Um, but at least with, with Mexico and Latin America, um, it's, like, essentially like she's in L.A. Right, right. You know? right. I'm so, in um, awe with you and Tess both and I was watching I want to say it was LA night one that you were there correct yes Yes. and I was watching that live stream all night long waiting for you to get the 22 hat everybody (laughs) was tweeting and wanting you to get the 22 hat but it ended up going to Kobe's daughter yes and it's like listen she's if I had to lose the hat to anyone, which was, <laughs> I never expected it, but if I had to, quote, lose the hat to anyone, yeah. Kobe's daughter, go for it. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's yours times a thousand. It's all were, good. Were you at um, the show kind of like playing swift ball or were you trying to be like, yeah, let's you enjoy know, this? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It was weird because I hadn't really watched live streams until after my what I thought was my last show in New York. And so after watching the show every single night, up until LA and then being there in person, I was like, I sort of still feel like I'm watching a live stream. Yeah. Like it's, I, I haven't computed that I'm like here, but I did run swift ball from the stands because so far I had like amazing wifi. They really did. did. And I I didn't want the people around me to think I was just on my phone the entire time, but I was like, Oh, I have to take a picture of this dress. I have to post it. Like hi, is here. Like it felt really silly, but it was a lot of fun being able to participate in person. Yeah. um, In the way that like, you know, I've been participating on a live stream for the past like three months. So yeah. for those crazy. for those who have not played Swift Ball, there might be Swifties that are just hearing about it for the first time right now. Could you explain mm-hmm. Swift Ball? Like how many points can you get? What are yes. you betting on? How does it work? Okay, so Swift Ball is um I mean, people like to equate it to fantasy football, but I know there are some very like specific differences. But it's essentially a guessing game type game that goes with Taylor Swift's Eras Tour, where you have a ballot and you fill out um, what outfit she's going to wear, what surprise song you think she's going to sing, um, if there's going to be any special guests or appearances or announcements. And um, each category has its own specific point value. And it's out of 113 points. Of so if you get every <laughs> single thing correct, you get 113 points. Not a single person has done that yet. Um, the highest we've had is 111. Wow. Oh. Uh, What's been your well, highest? That was when she was repeating her outfits. Um, oh, when she, okay. So but okay. But, but, yeah. but, but still. Know. What's been the highest you've ever scored on Swift Ball? <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I actually don't usually play it myself. Yep. Um, That's, I fair. Just That's fair. You're just running it. Fill out yeah. ballot. Um, but I, the, the days that I've done it, I haven't done very well. Um, <laughs> because I, I kind of, you know, try to do the whole like, oh, well, statistically, this is what's most likely to happen. And of course, Taylor is like, screw your statistics. I'm going <laughs> to do like one thing very slightly different. And then it just tanks everybody's ballots. And um, I have tried to teach my parents the like statistics and the probabilities of things because they like to play. And they're like bottom <laughs> every week. And I'm like, okay, if I'm giving people not insider information, but like, you know, things that I've noticed, and I'm like helping them out yeah. try to like say, this is probably the most likely thing to choose. And they're not doing well. <laughs> hey, I, Nick I and I understand people... that. Nick and I understand <laughs> that. We were the bottom two for the surprise song guesses. So yeah. it's, it's hard to think like Taylor Swift. But I do want to know, As an innovator, you came up with this, which is so genius, and I just adore you for it. But you said you continued because people kept wanting more and more. Is it annoying that people want more and more and more from you? And I'm asking because I always want more and more from Taylor, and I want to know if she would think I'm annoying. (laughs) Um, I think it's natural to initially see that as annoying, but I, I like to take a step back and be like, the reason people are like bombarding my DMs, the reason that people are asking, are you doing international? The reason that people get upset by my rulings is because they care. (laughs) Yeah. And the fact that I have not only like made this game and gotten so many people to play, but have that many people care that much Mm -hmm. is like in a way nice. Yeah. Yeah. Like obviously like it's not fun having people like yell at you on the internet but like (laughs) it's just passion deep down inside it's because that yeah it's because they care and the fact that I'm able to 
like evoke that emotion from them is like really like mind blowing and honestly a little humbling, even if it is like them yelling at me being yeah. like, you're wrong, you're stupid. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's cause you care and right. you want to win. And I, I made that. Um, it, yeah. So, you know, kind of, and kind of, but also not. Good. <laughs> And right now, and like the way that it started and the way that it is still right now, for anyone that wants to play, it's a Google form, right? Like a Google form that you yes. kind of fill out and everything. With her still being on tour for at least another year, as we know so far, could you ever see Swiftball becoming like an app or something that's kind of not necessarily, like, I guess, do you see it developing tech-wise? You know, we've actually had several people reach out wanting to do apps and websites. And I'm actually hesitant to do that because I do know, um, you know, I don't know the actual phrase because it's been a while since I took like a marketing class, but I don't want to um, alienate the audience that I have. The majority of my audience is on Twitter and we actually could see it real time the day that Twitter went down and we had to move to TikTok and Tumblr and Instagram. We lost like maybe 70 to 80% of our players because people aren't willing to switch platforms. Mm. And um, I'm most comfortable on Twitter. I think it's really accessible when it works. Um, and I feel like it's easy for people to find us and to play along, whether it's casually or like really, yeah. you know, in, in depth. And I don't know how it would translate to an app or a website. And I don't know how many people would be willing to move. And then there's also the cost of keeping up a website and keeping up an app. And I don't want to... I don't want to bear that burden and I don't want to put that burden on other people because I've always maintained that it's going to be free. And I also think that like, it kind of takes the casualness out of it. Like it was always meant to be fun and silly and like casual. And then of course, you know, we're now at 33,000 people <laughs> who played the last game. Um, but I kind of want to like keep it as low key as I can. Because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not a business for me. I, I do this for free. I make no money off of it. Um, and I, I don't want people to even think that I'm like trying to like monopolize this whole thing, you know, How thoughtful. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. That this is something that you came up with and you're still like, no, but I'm doing it for you. That is so sweet. It's just like the Swifty community, you <laughs> yes. know, it's like, it's like yeah. something, within, something within the community that just happens to be getting bigger and bigger every day. Yeah. yeah. And it's because of the people who play it. And I would never want to alienate any of those people who have caused it to become so big because without the people who play it, there is no game. Right. And do you have, you know? I mean, you kind of have like a little team of people, right? That help you with yeah. like the scores and just everything. Cause that would be a lot for just you to do. So how many, yeah. like on a, on a single night, how many of your friends or how many of you are basically behind the scenes of Swiftball? So the, the Swiftball staff, which I say that very lightly because they're all volunteer. It's all free. Um, we have six people and then we have three streamers. So um, there's myself, who's not part of the six because I, I don't know why I don't count myself. Um, <laughs> there's Jackie, who does our graphics for the ballots, and she's now doing the bracelets and the trophies. Um, there's Maya, who does the patches. There's Rogov, who does the scoring. He like keeps track of the spreadsheet and makes sure everything's totaling correctly. Um, there is Erin who's Swift Funnies, Erin. She is our Midnight's bodysuit expert. <laughs> Stella, who's our Midnight's t-shirt expert, because we know I'm, I'm shot by the end of the night. Like I can't tell anything apart when it's Midnight's era time. Yeah. And it's like grainy. Um, and then, <laughs> yeah. It's grainy. I'm tired. I can't tell what those dresses are on a good day. Like it, it's really helpful to have them be like, oh, it's this one done. And I don't even have to think about it. Um, and then there's Erin Quo, who's kind of, she's more behind the scenes. She kind of helps me um, figure out how to do stuff on the back end and like keeps me sane. And then we have Tess, Tess Deer, um, Folk Lyric on Twitch, and then uh, David on Swift Stream. And those streamers are really like an essential part. We don't work together per se, but they're very collaborative. And um, they're kind of the reason we're able to do Swiftball because if we didn't have a stream, we wouldn't have a game. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That's so incredible. And we really appreciate everything that y'all are doing for the Swifty community because of people like you and people like Tess, you're just keeping the involvement there. You're allowing yeah. other people to still be a part of it because I haven't been to an Eras concert in a really long time now. <laughs> it's been since Arlington, since I've been. Oh, a, wow. Yeah, since I've been to one. But I still get to watch it and I still enjoy it. I mean, that night that you were there, 
everybody was clowning. There was a lot of clowning going on on Swift Talk. <laughs> what is Taylor going to do tonight? So that was one of the first times I watched the concert from beginning to end. A lot of times I would tune in around the secret song, but that day I was mm-hmm. glued. I was waiting. What's going to happen? She didn't announce anything that day, but the concert was so flawless and she brought it <laughs> that I still felt like I was a part of it. I did not. It wasn't a waste of time. Some people might think that, you know, if you're waiting on an announcement that doesn't happen because everybody's been clowning. But no, I was I was enchanted and enthralled watching that. I'm I'm so glad that you got to witness that live. It was it was insane. And then the fact that it's like likely going to be in the tour movie is like, yeah, you're like, I was there. And how Um, do you how do you because. I I keep up like on Twitter also like just to see what all the mm-hmm. scoring and how I'm doing and everything and obviously I see you posting stuff. How is it hard for you to not fall for the stuff that's photoshopped? Because sometimes <laughs> I fall for the stuff that's photoshopped and then I kind of wait for you to be like, this is fake. <laughs> like- <laughs> yeah. Well, at the beginning, um, it kind it turned out the the way that the gaslighting started <laughs> is people would not like what outfit she wore and they're like. No, it's this one. And it was like a joke that I thought people were just going to do for one show. Um, and I want to say it was like the second or third weekend of Swiftball ever. Um, and then it became like people actually seriously trying to gaslight me. And then it became more into like meme creations. Yeah. So now most times people don't actually try to like trick me as much as they try to like make a funny meme that they know that I'm going to repost. Yeah. Uh, but I will say from that first weekend of people trying to gaslight me, someone made the 1989 set that was blue. I know. And it was really, like, legit looking. And I like to say that they manifested it because it looks exactly like the one that she brought out. So I was like, well, I'm not going to say it was from them, but... Yeah, well, that night, because I remember that photo, the photoshopped one, to make it look blue. And we Mm -hmm. all were like, haha, blah, 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 whatever. And then the night that she did come out in the actual blue outfit, And it looked identical. And I was seeing the pictures and I like couldn't, I genuinely couldn't tell if it was like a real photo from that night as I'm watching it on a live stream. (laughs) That's like, I know for a fact she's wearing the blue outfit, but is this photo from tonight or is this the photoshopped one? And I even saw, because, you know, it was obviously such a big deal. And I saw like news outlets and like everybody using that photo. But I'm like, is that the Photoshop (laughs) photo? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. I I feel like with high quality photos, it usually takes like until the next morning for us to get them because that's how I use them for our ballots. And it, it makes it really hard when I'm sitting there like waiting for an HQ so I can put it in the ballot for that night. Yeah. Um. But I perhaps for 1989 really or announcement night, it, it might have been different, but it is really funny. Like people are so good at Photoshop. I know. Um, and I appreciate that they're not now using that talent to actually try to trick me because honestly if it was like a show on pacific time i might fall for it um and there there are a couple ones that i've like i've taken a second i was like that's it's really good (laughs) but that's that's not right um but usually people kind of make it obvious if it's if it's a joke or not um Mostly. And then if, if it's not, then I kind of wait and look in the comments and see like, (laughs) is this real? But, but the good thing about it specifically when I'm able to run the show is like, I'm watching a live stream, like while it's happening. So I'm trusting what I see with my two eyes. And if, if what someone sends me is different, I'm like, Like, nice try. Good one. I saw it though. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Do you have, out of all of the outfits, do you have a favorite? Oh, um, yeah, I really like the cupcake dress. <laughs> it's, I, I don't know the actual designer. It's the one that she brought out on Speak Now release day that she's worn several times yeah. since the like purple ombre. I just I really love it. I don't know what about it just lights up my brain in the best way, but it's just it's beautiful. Yeah. Do you guys have a favorite outfit? Lacey, Amy? Um, I, I would have to get, I like the big and poofy. I I totally have to agree. (laughs) Just that dress is gorgeous. Whenever she brought it out. Um, I'm also a fan of her reputation outfit. The one leg. I I like the one leg. Mm -hmm. I think that's very, very hot looking. Also, um, oh, have we seen, um, all the back to back from her in Glendale and then her on the last show in LA and her vigilante shit. Oh my God. The way she slays in that last oh, one like and confidence. how she just owns the confidence of it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I love it. Amy. 
Um, I think the white folklore is my favorite. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, that's so I, you. Out just, of the folklore dresses. Yeah, yeah. It, it just it's perfect. If I had to imagine, that's exactly what it would be. Yeah. So yeah. good. I think yeah. my favorite is the um, just the lover bodysuit. The the not yes. the not the blue one. The other one, and not the purple one. The other like the main one. Uh-huh. You know, the pink one. The pink one with like the sparkly yeah. boots. Like I just I love I love that outfit so much. Like so 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 yeah. so, so 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 much. I think that's I think that's probably my favorite. But I have an attachment to the purple with tassels though. But that was just because <laughs> I was there the first night she wore it, and I was like, oh, yeah, it's a new thing. And then and then we were like clowning because we thought she was gonna do something, and then you know the karma music video happened. But um. <laughs> I, I have a personal attachment yeah. to that bodysuit, but the, uh, there's something about the Speak Now, the like I mean, yeah, Speak Now dress. Of course, just, right? I'm I'm sorry, bodysuit. It's I, I like <laughs> to dress more. Are you nervous at all for her like changing outfits for when she goes international? Because I'm kind of, like we talk about it on our podcast all the time. We're like, is she going to change mm-hmm. the set list? Is she going to start over with surprise songs? Because it is very possible for her to change things up. Outfits being a very pot like a real possibility but does that stress you out at all <laughs> um what worries me I think specifically is like not being able to be like on when she debuts something new um so like I, what I was saying is like you know I'm able to determine if something's like fake or not because I'm watching it live but you know when she's in Japan <laughs> I I'm probably gonna be asleep and so then I'll have to be like okay is this a really good edit or is this the actual outfit if we don't have someone who's like running it for me? Um, so that kind of, that does worry me, but I will say, I feel like, you know, she just debuted technically six new outfits yeah. in the last two shows in LA. So I feel like she at least has some stuff to like add into the rotation, mm-hmm. but I feel like it's not out of the question for her mm-hmm. to add more. Um I'm excited when we get new things, but it's also a little stressful because I, I then have to get the high quality photo and add it to the ballot and edit everything. And if I have stuff prepped, like I did for LA for the <laughs> last night, you know, I already had the ballot ready to go. And um, actually the second to last night, but I had, I had the ballot ready to go. And then she brought out the new, like, cut out Rorschach. I call it the Rorschach <laughs> bodysuit. I was like, I don't have a picture of this. I now have to fix a ballot. Like, what are mm-hmm. you doing to me? It was ready to post. So that that I'm a little like nervous about. But you know, again, it's because of something good. We got a new outfit. And right. I'm always excited to see like what she brings out next. Yeah. So it's exciting. But then on the back end, it kind of makes things a little hard. Yeah. So as Swifties, um, some of us like to clown, some of us harder than others. I am a total Swifty mm-hmm. clown and I own it and I love it. Um, are there any theories that you're following right now? Any guesses on what she's going to do next? Mm, that's a good one. Um, I have one theory, but I, I can't share it until it comes true because <laughs> I, I feel like it's far too out there. Um, <laughs> but honestly, you know, I'm a clown but like the clownest of clowns, like the only times I clown is when it's wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Usually like I was a Woodvale truther. I got everybody on my Instagram, like into you. the whole Woodvale thing back. I think what was like April 21st of 2021. Like I had everyone believing that Woodvale was going to come out and nothing happened. I didn't think she would announce 1989 in LA. Really? I didn't either. Because well, it's a New York album. The mm-hmm. first song is Welcome to New York, and you're going to announce it on the wrong coast? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that, I was like, oh, she's not going to do it. I Did you it think too um, obvious? I just was like, yeah, yeah. she's making it way too obvious. Yeah. Amy texted us, like, the night the <laughs> night of, because we were wondering if we should, like, stay up or not. And I was like, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to maybe go live on our Instagram just to, like, see what happens. And Amy was like, nothing's going to happen. Like, don't even, <laughs> don't even bother. <laughs> And then I like texted her at like one in the morning being like, oh, my God. <laughs> Did you think anything was going to happen in L.A.? Did you think she was going to surprise yeah. bait and switch and something else was going to happen? I thought she was going to do something night one. I was like, everything feels very like different. Like everyone's clowning. Like the energy felt different. And the fact that the bracelets were bigger. Mm-hmm. And then someone apparently told one of my friends at the like Capital One elevator, like, oh, who do you hope is going to be a special guest? Oh, keep your eye out. Like, they were really hinting mm-hmm. that, like, maybe Selena was going to be there. Like, I was shocked she didn't have a special guest at all mm-hmm. in LA. Yeah. Like, I mean, Haim, hi, yes, but, like, 
right. an additional special guest. Yeah. Which I, I guess I like, totally thought. She really hasn't done that this tour besides people like Aaron Desner, like people that are already mm-hmm. on like her music. You know, like it hasn't been like 1989 where she brings out artists and sings their music with them. Like she hasn't done that at all. Right. But I think it's also yeah. just because Has like. Has she done a song with Mumford? I and Marin. Marin Morris and Mumford, but they're on her yeah. album. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. but she's just, like, at the but. top of her game, you know? It's, like, mm-hmm. I mean, having special guests, I think, is a lot of fun. But I think for a lot of artists, it's, like, as for her, it's just an added bonus. Like, it's not something she, like, necessarily right. needs to collab. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but. Yeah. But it's yeah. always fun. I was I was hoping to see Selena. I'm going to be real. Yeah, I thought she um, would show up. But it, it was, it was yeah. a great night regardless. And also, like, you know, there was that. I can see you exhibit in mm-hmm. LA and people are like, Oh, the Lautners are there. Maybe like, she's going to do something with them. I totally thought something was going to happen at LA night one. And I was like, Oh God, if nothing happens to LA night one, it's going to be the last night. <laughs> and I'm already going to be on the other coast. And that's, so I'm just not going to clown. Cause I, I don't want the FOMO. And yeah. Here we are. Um, <laughs> but maybe you'll but be in the documentary. I- Maybe and honestly, the the next night that was so absolutely foul of her to like do it the the night I wasn't there on like on a plane home. Um, maybe mentioning Swiftball and playing my two favorite songs like back to back. So not cool. But <laughs> she was filming, so if it, any of that makes it into the documentary, I'm gonna be like, okay, you know, it's it's like a consolation prize. <laughs> but <laughs> do you th- do you think As that for- she, do you think that she knows about Swiftball? You know, I told Ryan Seacrest this when I was on his thing. Like, literally the morning she kind of maybe talked about it. I was like, I would like to think she does, but until she says something about it, I don't want to get my hopes up. Mm -hmm. She said Um, people are watching it like a sport. I don't think you could get any more clear than that, though. That that seems, to me, I took that as a direct shout out to you. Yeah, I I think so too. And especially I made a TikTok about this, but I was like, as someone who has watched like the past, what, 25 Champagne Problems speeches, she rarely deviates from the like, oh, you know, we were in, in the pandemic and there were mm-hmm. more important things. And like, this is just a song I really wanted to play for you guys and hear Champagne Problems. Like she doesn't usually, unless there's something big she wants to discuss, like, you know, oh, I was made the mayor, or Cruel Summer is a single, or there's this bench in um, Centennial Park because of me now. Like, there's an article that my dad sent me. Like, unless there's something like that, she doesn't usually deviate from that speech. So I would say it's likely, but then again, of course, there's the people like, be real. She's already talked about sports. Like, she didn't mm-hmm. say you by name. Like, come on, you're like delusional. I'm like, yeah, no, you're We're right. We're all delusional. delusional. It's part of it's exactly. part of our it's part of our. <laughs> Part of our schmick. And you know what? Even if, well, I like to think that she knows about it. But even if she doesn't verbalize it, there's no way that people on her team don't know about it. Right? right. Like, yeah. I, like, I'm convinced that she has people whose, like, sole job is to scroll Swifty's social media. So, yeah, I, like, there's no way that people around her, like, don't know about it. So, by default, she's got to know about it. Because she could shut it well, down I if do she know. didn't approve. That's I, true. I believe. That's I think. True. That's and, how we feel about our podcast. Yeah. Like, well, we haven't been sued yet. So. <laughs> Same with Tess. Like, Tess is like, well, maybe the reason that she played songs that are kind of nods to us the day after is like, maybe she just like hates us. And I was like, if she hated us, I feel like there would be some sort of like <laughs> a lawsuit. <laughs> and, yeah. Like, there's no way that they, you know, no, don't know that we're or at least for Tess is streaming the shows every week and like she would be shut down banned from TikTok that's it mm-hmm. um like and the fact that she mentioned like oh you're watching this online and I love you so much for it like I feel like that's kind of like a I like this not a I hate this mm-hmm. yeah um but of course Tess is like oh god like maybe that's why she did it that no. way but I don't think so so um, two things um one, one of my favorite TikToks is whenever people are standing in the stadiums and they're like, I can see how Taylor Swift can fill this whole place up. But to think that this place gets filled up with people who are here to watch football, like, how does that even work? <laughs> I think that that's absolutely hilarious. Also, um, we mentioned that Taylor doesn't necessarily need more people to come out with her. Like, it's not beneficial. What she also doesn't mm-hmm. need is the Super Bowl. And she <laughs> allegedly turned that down. How do we feel about her turning down the Super Bowl again? I think it makes sense. Um, I feel like 
I actually tweeted this the other day. Um, I feel like with things like the Super Bowl, you know, there's such high honors in artist careers, like Super Bowl, hosting SNL, all of these things. But she's kind of surpassed that. She's mm-hmm. essentially playing the Super Bowl every single show she yeah, plays. Yes, I agree. Um, if you look at the attendance, you know, there's more people at her shows than at the Super Bowl. So for her, playing the Super Bowl would be like a silly little side quest. It wouldn't <laughs> be like the pinnacle Big of her thing. career. Um, and I don't think she needs it. But um, I don't think it's out of the question forever. I mm-hmm. just think, you know, I mean, if you look at her tour schedule, yeah, she's she's in Tokyo. But you know, if she wanted to play the Super Bowl, she would have made the schedule in a way that would allow her to play the Super Bowl, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, Perhaps it's like a down the road sort of thing, or perhaps she has her own, like reasons against not wanting to, you know, specifically, probably accessibility for her fans, because she knows people are going to try to pay $10,000 for a ticket just to see her perform for 10 minutes, Mm -hmm. when you know, you can pay a fraction of that and see her perform for three hours. Like, because Swifties yeah. would take over the Super Bowl if she yeah. was performing yeah. for yeah. sure. But I agree, yeah. like a few well, a lot of artists do it. I mean, the artists that do the Super Bowl, they don't get paid. They basically have right. to like do their own show and then they kind of see the back end because their streaming numbers go up like statistically. Mm-hmm. But Taylor doesn't need that. Like Taylor's if anything, one. if anything, they need her. So mm-hmm. I was reading an article about how if the NFL wants her bad enough they could pay her, but she would be the very first mm-hmm. artist to ever get paid to do the Super Bowl. But it's like, I really, oh, wow. I really just don't think, I don't think she needs it. I feel like, I feel like kind of like, like for her, it would be like a little side quest. It would be interesting mm-hmm. to see what songs she would pick, mm-hmm. you know, to kind of mash together for like a 10 to 12 minute performance out of curiosity. But I just feel like she's better than the Super Bowl. Like everybody's like, oh my gosh, yeah, Taylor doing the Super Bowl. I'm like, she's, like you said, she's doing the Super Bowl three times a week like every weekend mm-hmm. she did so far six nights sold out like mm-hmm. the super bowl yeah. the super bowl needs her more than she needs any sort of anything <laughs> and I, I think people are right too when they say like if she does it it's gonna be after all of the taylor's versions are out so she can play all of her songs yeah. and it's gonna like and if people go back and they're like oh i want to listen to these it will be songs that she owns and not you know because if you've noticed, the streaming numbers have gone up for all of the songs that she sings on right. tour that aren't necessarily hers. Um, so I feel like, you know, there's it's it's not necessary to advertise Scooter's version while, you know, she has yet to, like, reclaim them. So I feel like that's also a, a good business move. But it's also, like, maybe she just never wants to. Maybe. And, like, I don't blame her if she, like, doesn't want to be in, in a room full of a bunch of men who very likely don't like her and are right. going to, like say stuff about her being the like halftime show Mm -hmm. but like again they 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 need her she doesn't need them like she would be doing them a favor exactly if if she performed exactly and if she doesn't want to whatever she's already the man she she doesn't need to yeah then i don't have to subject myself to watching football (laughs) (laughs) yeah seriously that's the only reason i watch the super bowl it's for (laughs) For commercials in the halftime i i mute the actual sport yeah um, <laughs> for that i feel though. like people are going to come for me for saying that but <laughs> nah <laughs> this is a safe space <laughs> good well ali where can everybody find you so they can keep up with swift ball and um when's the first show when's taylor coming back when's everything going to kick off so um you can find me on twitter that's mainly where i live um i'm wrecked maserati on twitter um you can also find me on tiktok it's at ali fools um and then on instagram it's at fantasy swiftball i know none of those match and it's really annoying but um <laughs> that's that's where we're at right now we also have a tumblr i don't run it um it's it's the official tumblr i'm just like never on it because i don't understand how to use it mm-hmm. um i believe that's also fantasy swiftball as well and we are back on Thursday, I think is the first Mexico City date. Um, and I think it's four shows in a row. So it'll be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if I'm correct. I should probably hold on. <laughs> yeah, I know it's <laughs> before, before this is in. Like, I know it's the 20 something. Which I guess I want to say the first one is Thursday. Because I'm also on a plane, and that was very poorly planned. Um, let's see. The 24th, 25th, 26th, and 27th in Mexico City. I think that's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
Yep, that's yeah. Thursday through Sunday. Yeah. Taylor's going to be back. Thursday through Sunday. We've all been <gasps> sleeping so in. Yeah, we, we've gotten off schedule from being up at midnights to meet her every single night. And um, sleep time's over. It's time yeah. to get back on schedule and get with Taylor Swift. And we're, we're so excited. <laughs> Allie, thank you so much for creating this game, for making it so fun for us to basically feel like we can be at the Ares tour without being at the Ares tour like every single week. And it really, it's, it's so fun and it's so special. And we love this community for so many reasons and you are obviously par- part of that reason. So thank you so much. And, and thank you for being so thoughtful too. Yeah. For, being, for being so thoughtful of other people. Uh-huh. That's just, I, I commend you. That yeah. That's great. Thank and you so much. So creative because I'm obsessed with all of the names for all the outfits. The bagel dress is probably my favorite. <laughs> I along with elusive, say, ex- elusive exclusive. <laughs> that's one of my favorites. I wanted someone to say their favorite was the everything bagel. Just to say the word. Just to, oh. <laughs> just to say that phrase. Yeah, everything bagel. <laughs> everything bagel dress. But thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us as well to come on the podcast. We... Of course. We've seen, so to pull the curtain back, we've been planning on having you on for a couple of weeks now, which is so funny because people have been posting on Twitter being like, oh my God, Ali should go on the 13 podcast. And then we would message each other like on the side and being like, little do they know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're so excited. Thank you so much, Ali. What an honor to be able to talk to of you and course. thank you for everything that you do. Thank you. It's, it's an honor to be able to talk about it. Like the fact that people are interested in it and want to hear about it is like, really crazy to me like people are like oh you're like fake humble like no like I did not expect this at all I didn't ask for any of this so the fact that people want to take their time and like talk to me about it and I could talk for ages about it like it's it's really wonderful and I really appreciate it well keep doing what you're doing and if you ever need anything we're here for you thank you me as well of course thank you so much for everything we really appreciate you yeah thank you Allie it's been lovely Mm -hmm. of course Bye. bye bye Thanks for listening to 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. Subscribe for free and leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts.